Hello everyone, my name is Reino and I have the privilege of doing a deep dive into the scriptures today, specifically with the focus on missional communities. Over the last couple of weeks we've spoken about missional communities and we've spoken about city groups, which is missional communities in the context of Fellowship City. And here's what we've said. We've said that we choose to get involved in specific spaces, places and groups in our neighborhoods and networks for the simple reason of loving serving and witnessing. Now we believe the best way to do this is through missional communities. Now what is a missional community? This is a Wikipedia definition but I think it's a good one. A missional community is a group of people about the size of an extended family who are united through Christian community around a common service and witness to a particular neighborhood or network of relationships. There you go. If you would like to hear it again, maybe just rewind the video. Now we believe that we should organize our church in missional communities, or like I've said, we call them city groups. Okay, awesome. Is this biblical? Missional communities, city groups, and organizing your church in that way? I would like to say yes, and I want to invite you to dive into the scriptures with me and to discover this together. Let's start at what is called the Great Commission. It's a very well-known portion of scripture from Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 with the idea that this is Jesus saying to his followers, this is what I want you to do. So let's read, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. So one of the most important tasks of the church is to make disciples. It is actually a distinctive characteristic of the church. We're not a social club, right? We're not people only looking after our own interests like a civil organization. We are disciples. We are learners. And we are people who are being formed or conformed and transformed as we go and live a life of faith. So the portion of scripture that I just read to you was at the end of the book of Matthew. Now let's see what happened in the book of Acts, which is a follow-up of that story. Let me read Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2 verses 42 to 47. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, this is the church, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So here's what we see. We read that the church, or these disciples, adopted new rhythms for their lives and they lived a common life uh, by forming new habits that came with these new rhythms. Now these were missional communities. On Lucas found it really bizarre to see these people all of a sudden live in this new way. But it was very attractive. The way that they lived was a form of witness for them. Up until this point in Acts, we know that at least 3,120 people came to faith in Jesus Christ and were known as the church. And obviously they were never together as 3,120. They were always in smaller groups. Communities on mission. Missional communities. And now we see this witness that they gave to the world of the good news of Jesus Christ happened through word and it happened through deed. The word creates and brings into being this new community, right? And the deeds that they did was this common life that they lived together. And obviously when they live, when they walk the talk, it reinforces this word and it becomes in itself a really effective witness. So what did they do? They devoted themselves to four things. And I'm just going to run through these four things real quick and we'll be done. The first one is they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. This means that they gathered. We read that they gathered in the temple courts because of the sheer size of the crowds. And we read that they also gathered in homes. 
And this is where they gathered to absorb and to hear the teaching of the apostles. This was a learning community and they were learning together. They were devoted to becoming learners, to, for always, uh, to, to forever be teachable and to learn more about what it means to follow Jesus. It was a distinctive mark of the church. So why do they mention this first? Well, I believe it's because what they are learning is about who they are worshipping. So we have this new worshipping community all pointing to Jesus the Christ. Well, someone needs to teach him uh, what the implications is of it and who Jesus is, obviously. So the apostles' teaching that we read about in Acts 2 helps us to explore the manifold implications of this announcement of the good news of Jesus Christ. Remember, at this point in the story, the New Testament as we know it uh, didn't exist yet. It was still being written. So the actual apostles who saw Jesus with their own eyes, who spoke to them by voice and who could touch him, they're still alive. And the only thing that they did to these thousands of people was to say, so this is what he said to us, and this is what he did, and this is what he commanded us to do. So what does that mean if we live in light of that? We know that Jesus was risen from the dead. And now the question is, how do we live in light of what he told us? It was a total life overall. When I was 13 years old, that's way back in the day in the 90s, I, uh, I, I was into surfing for a specific season of my life. Now, I know that sounds weird for a boy that grew up in Pretoria <laughs> and played fly off in primary school rugby. But there was a phase that I really enjoyed surfing. And it was, a, it was a whole new story that I imagined for my life, even though I lived here in Gauteng. I had to kind of retrain my mind and my life, you know, to imagine myself being a surfer. So I read new magazines, I wore new clothes, I had posters on my wall of Kelly Slater and Andy Irons and Ross Clark Jones and all those kind of guys. I watched a different kind of movie. Whenever we would go away on holiday to the seaside, I would look at the ocean differently. There's patterns that I would look for. It was like I was awakened to this whole new way of life. And everything was pointed towards wanting to be a surfer. It's the same if you are a follower of Jesus, because the gospel speaks to every dimension of our lives and it seeps into every dimension of our lives. And that's why the apostles' teachings tops the list of what the church kept themselves busy with. The other three things, real quick, is the church devoted themselves to fellowship. The Greek word there is koinonia. And it's more uh, than what we think. It's more than just meeting up and asking each other how things are going. It is a commitment to share everything we have with others. Third thing, the breaking of bread. Eating together. You guys know as well as I do, if you sit around a table, it's more about than just the food that you put into your mouth. It's about sharing yourself with other people. It's about opening up your life to other people. It's about having conversation about life, giving each other some love and grace. This was also where the early church would do communion. The last thing they devoted themselves to is the prayers. Now at this point, this 3,120 people was almost entirely a Jewish community, which means that they come from thousands of years of tradition around prayer. They would pray at specific times, they would pray specific prayers, they would cycle through the book of Psalms while they pray. And we see that the church, the early church, devoted themselves to this. They gathered together for worship. Now, as we grow as Christians, it simply means that we should repeat these habits and we will grow in the understanding of these ideas. It's about deciding to become a surfer and then eventually ending up and surfing yourself. So the how question of how they did it is answered right there. And we read in the book of Acts that if you devote yourself to this, you will be transformed. So let me just recap for us. To be true to the biblical text, what should we do? We should gather and we should teach. We should facilitate spaces for fellowship. We should get together to share communion and break bread. And we should teach people how to pray and to worship. At Fellowship City, the best way to do that, we believe, is to do it through city groups, to do it through missional communities. It's not a Bible study, but we study the Bible. It's not a social club, but we are social with one another. It's not a dinner club, but we eat together. It's not a prayer gathering, but we pray together. Being a missional community or being a city group is about living life together. 
and doing these things as followers of Jesus together in the context of smaller groups about the size of an extended family. Let me just read you three more verses out of the Bible, one from Acts 20, one from Colossians 4, and one from 1 Corinthians 16. And see if you can pick up the common denominator word. Spoiler alert, it's the word house. So in Acts chapter 20 verse 20 it says, You know that I did not avoid proclaiming to you anything that was profitable, or from teaching you publicly, and from house to house. Colossians 4, Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters in Laodicea, and to Nympha and the church in her home. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 19, The churches of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla send you greetings warmly in the Lord, along with the church that meets in their home. If the church is made up of missional communities or city groups, for us, we believe that we'll be able to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We'll be able to be the church in the way that we were designed to be. So let me ask you a few questions. What does that mean to you? Why does it excite you? What about it scares you? As we ponder these things, let's discuss it together. Grace and peace.